Hello everyone and welcome to another Meru Networks tech spot. This time we're going to do one on air traffic control. If you recall from a previous tech spot, I referred to this one. The previous one was a microcell one, so this time we'll actually provide the answer what's better than microcells, what actually solves the problems out there. So what is air traffic control? Air traffic control is Meru's fourth generation wireless line architecture. And what makes it unique is it's actually RF focused. Okay, so what does that mean? So what we have here is what I like to say, it's a complete rethinking on what it means to deploy and provide wireless coverage. So if you think of the way architectures have been thought of, mostly until now, if you look at basically the other types of products that are out there, they're focused very tightly on what it means to have an access point and basically providing these islands of coverage where each access point is basically just a wireless hub and you stick it out there and the access point runs itself, manages itself. All of that then is sent back to a central controller whose job it is is really just to, from a distance basically, try to adjust things such as channels and power levels. And so that's what you'll actually hear is, is referred to as radio resource management. Now of course to manage something really means to basically influence it from a distance. Well we do something completely different. Using the same looking wired architecture, though you know it's very unique in its own way, we provide a completely different wireless architecture where the actual intelligence is able to be coordinated across all the access points and the controller together to provide something where we actually do our RF right at the edge. So we're able to coordinate, to control, to essentially manage the resources in a way that is much stronger than just managing it remotely by changing power levels, but actually getting down into the packets, the bits, the bytes, the waves themselves as they flow. So how do we do that? So here are the cornerstones of our RF control. The basic concept is virtual cell, and this is something that you're all probably familiar with or at least have heard of before. And the idea of virtual cell is actually rather simple when you think about it. All the access points that are on the same channel just blend together. They don't become one access point, but they look like one access point to the client, and that allows us to do a lot of very important things and solve real fundamental RF problems. In addition to that, we have this concept of channel layering, which basically is simple. The idea here is don't throw away the channels. If you're doing microcell which you may remember from the previous one, you have to use channels in a certain way. Well, we don't have those requirements. Here you can use channels any which way you want to, and that allows the deployment to actually deploy as many channels as are physically capable of in that band. In addition to this, we have a very important concept where we have this reliability, especially in high density networks. And this is key because it's taking a lot of the guesswork and a lot of the unpredictability outside of or away from RF directly. So, Key examples here are basically we're able to handle flash crowds, we're able to handle high density deployments even if they're pervasively deployed, and by doing so we're able to provide switch-like fairness across each of the devices. So let's look at these close up. So virtual cells again, it's a radically different way to think about cells. Instead of thinking of each access point as that island of connectivity, as its own radio, sort of in isolation, just beaconing out radio waves and hopefully clients hear it, if they do, good, if they don't, well okay, they're out of range, we do something completely different. All the access points that are on the same channel blend together. And whereas other architectures, this would actually be a very bad thing. And in fact, microcell is completely dominated by the concept that two neighboring access points had better not be on the same channel because they interfere. For us, RAPs don't interfere when they're on the same channel. Instead, they coordinate and they cooperate with each other and suddenly they're able to do something quite interesting, which is by being on the same channel, they're able to avoid the, the overlap problem that you normally have and actually solve, again, real RF problems. So, again, why would we do this? What problems are they solving? Well, the key concept here is that the network is regaining control over the network. Sounds pretty simple, and it sounds, yeah, of course, why wouldn't the network control it? But in 802.11, if you just implement it naively with this concept of independent islands of connectivity, the network has very little control over itself. It's really the clients that dominate, and the clients end up choosing which access points to go to, the clients choose what data rates to go to, the clients choose essentially everything about their experience, which means that, you know, 100 different types of clients or 100 different real clients, you get 100 different types of behaviors. Well, by going to this concept of virtual cell, we eliminate that. In fact, we eliminate a lot of the problems that people experience with wireless that makes them very frustrated about it, which includes handoffs themselves or sticky clients where as you move around the network, your client stays associated to an access point that's far away from you. We remove the unpredictability, we get rid of this wild scanning, 
We eliminate low bars. Now you're only going to get low bars if you're really out of range of the network, not just out of range of some access point in the network. And we get rid of low data rates. And really, only fourth generation wireless line architectures can solve it. Third generation can't do that. And of course, this is something that if you've played around with wireless, I'm sure you've experienced many times. The frustrating concept of when you're actually looking for coverage and you're standing right underneath an access point, but your coverage is low. You get very few bars, your things just don't work, you get slow throughput. That's because of microcells. That's because of third generation technology. So having the network take control and remove it from the client's hands, we actually solve those problems. Well, in addition, there's one really big benefit that falls out of this, which is that the complexity of planning is now virtually eliminated. In a microcell network, planning was the key step to the point. Before you could consider putting up access points, you had to get a thorough and detailed RF plan to make sure that you know or could hopefully guess how clients might behave. Because if your access points overlap or if there's a coverage gap in between it, not necessarily a hole, but a little area of weakness, clients tend to do strange things. Well, the problem is, is that you go out and now try to deploy based on this plan, and well, the world isn't anything like that plan. And so when you get up, you get these very strange shaped cells that then interfere. We remove all that. By the access points blending together, the seams between them disappear. We don't really care. So long as there's ample coverage everywhere, it doesn't matter where our access points go. Now, virtual cell has a lot of interesting, almost counterintuitive things, especially if you've been playing with microcells a lot. And so I've listed a few of them here, and I'll go through them with you. Probably one of the biggest things that we hear is that, well, doesn't this produce a big Mac? You know, this is now one big collision to me. Well, no, we don't sell hamburgers. It's really not a big Mac. In fact, it's nothing like one. Big Macs do exist outside the hamburger world. And the idea of a big Mac, when people say that, is instead of deploying access points, you're deploying little radio repeaters, or, for example, leaky cracks LRF. That's a completely different concept where there's one centralized radio, one centralized Mac, and everything just sort of gets out to a very, very large area. That's not what we're doing. We're keeping our access points as its own independent, or at least its own Mac, and each one then has its own collision domain. But on top of that, our access points are actually intelligent. They're not independent islands, and so they coordinate to remove that problem from ever happening. By doing so, now we're able to mitigate collisions actually do a lot of intelligence to make sure the collisions really don't happen, and at the same time, optimize things such as data rate, which are really so crucial in order to getting the highest throughput and the most predictability out of your network. Another concept that you may think about is that, well, single channel, well, it's an interesting term. Doesn't it just mean only one channel? No, not at all. In fact, single channel you can, means you can operate on a single channel, and we do have deployments where people, for specific reasons, have chosen to just deploy a single channel of coverage on our network. Often that's because of adjacent interference, non-802.11, or legacy systems that they don't want to touch. But really, when you think about our network, by being able to go to single channel, you can now start stacking. And I'll get to that in a moment. But in addition, we have this concept, well, maybe single channel is only a third of the capacity of microcell. You may hear that. In fact, you'll often hear competitors say, we'll prove it to you, because take three access points from mirror networks and take three access points from anyone else, and we'll show you we're three times the throughput because they're forced to be on a single channel. Well, again, since we're not forced to be on a single channel in any stretch of the imagination, that's not true. But really what they're trying to do there, but that's sort of a game that they're playing, where three, they happen to know if you put all of our three access points on one channel, then you might get less than three in Microsoft. And it's possible depending on how you arrange it. But look, the point isn't three access points versus three access points. Let's try six access points versus six access points, or nine versus nine. What happens when you start getting into microcell deployments where you can't reuse channels because they're neighboring? That's where the key is, and that's where you really begin to see the difference. And then one final doubt that may come across people's minds is, this is so radically different from what everyone else does. How does this possibly fit into 8 or 11? And that's an interesting question, but there's a really good answer there, which is it fits in perfectly. And the reason why is 8 or 11 was designed. The people who wrote it, you know, and all of the vendors out there were among the people who wrote this wrote it so that the vendors could build access points in different ways. At the time, there were a lot of thoughts on what that meant, and you can see those in the different architectures that are out there. There are fat APs, there are thin APs in this concept of split Mac, and then there's virtual cell. They all fit together under the same umbrella because 802.11 intended it to be that way. 